So I was walking through Brisbane International Airport and I was going on a business trip. I had a consulting company, we were doing personal development and business development. And I was walking down this aisle, not, not on the plane yet, and I caught a reflection of myself in the mirror. And I had this terrifying moment, and some of you may have had it already, where you look at yourself and you go, that's not me. And it was so, it was such a jolt that it, I couldn't unsee it, unhear it, etc. So I went on the trip and I was just full of anxiety because I hated what I was wearing, who I'd become. I'm from a coastal town, I'm from a beach, beachside town. And I was stuck in this uh, entrepreneurial corporate suit. I was so uncomfortable in my own skin and it all come rushing out. So this trip was full of anxiety. I still had to deliver the workshops, deliver the trainings, you know, do all the strategy stuff that we were doing. And I ended up getting into an argument with my then business partner. I had become so rational and, and evidence-based, my life become about function and productivity. And it worked for a bit, but I, there was cracks in my game. And I kept arguing for the rational worldview. And my business partner at the time said one thing which just jolted me in at the right time. And he said, there's no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. And I didn't get it straight away, but what he meant was that it's f totally fine to be rational and reasonable and evidence-based when things are on the railroad tracks and stable. But what happens when the proverbial shit hits the fan. Well, people revert to religious language, whether we like it or not, whether we've ever, ever been religious or not. When you are, when you have the highest of high experience, big massive state change, or low of the low fearing for who you are, you will turn to religious language. He got me. He, he exposed a part of my psyche that was completely missing. And, and pushed to the side and just disowned about a lot of things. And what if I was to tell you there is such thing called Pascal's Wager? Pascal's Wager is, is the fact that we now know that your life will flourish more with a belief in something bigger than you. I'm not saying it's true or wrong or right, I'm just telling you that there is, that there is good, good evidence, my life included, that says Pascal's Wager is there's more benefit to human flourishing to believing in something than not. What's up everyone, my name is Nathaniel Hodges. Uh, I'm the founder of an interdisciplinary development company called Outliers. And we're interested in one thing and one thing only, which is human flourishing. Which is how do you as an individual flourish in your life and your projects and your business. And I don't care where my teachings come from. I really don't. I'll take them from anywhere if they're gonna help me and my clients flourish. So, what this channel is about, the School of Outliers, is I wanna to bring to you the kernels of the best that I, I've learned and delivered for my clients across seven years now. Across everything, I'm talking, we're gonna go into psychology, human development, the 11 world religions, mythology, philosophy. We're gonna look at Eastern spiritual systems. We're gonna look at Western esoteric thought. We're gonna look at neuroscience, performance, uh, and we are going to look at the current worldviews and historical worldviews. I want to comment on some of the biggest commentators in these spaces for one reason only. So you can make an informed decision on how you think and what you do. And when I say informed, I mean in a choice that you know and understand these things. If you don't like it, you can just throw it away, but at least you'll understand. If there's ever a point in your life where you don't know what to do, there's something you don't understand. If you understand, you can act. And so that's what this is all about. So, a little bit about my background. I started my career in academics, actually, in QUT. So I was lecturing and tutoring at QUT, but it felt a bit funny, you know, because I had a good mind and I was good at creating connections, but I, I wasn't that hardcore academic that wanted to do the whole path. So I felt it wasn't, it was the path of least resistance. I had to get some runs in the real world, so I started businesses. I jumped out of university and kind of went straight into it because I was a really bad employee. Like I just couldn't do that dynamic very well. 
my small businesses at start, they did actually quite well over about three or three or four years. Is we had a really good run, um, and then I got offered an opportunity to step into uh, this an agency, a consulting agency. We were doing business development and personal development in one, and this was before it was the cool thing. It was still counterculture. It was still a bit edgy, uh, and our style was pretty intense as well. So. We gathered a kind of local reputation, uh, even though we had some overseas clients, and that and that went that went very well. That was that was a really big eye opening for me in terms of business. But during that time, I went back and re kind of re engaged my studies in psychology. That lit me up again. I did some independent research, which was which was heaps of fun as well. When that all came to a close, end of 2019, uh, is I started Outliers. It's the start of 2020. I, I decided to speak what I wanted to speak and really just go for what was on my heart and I have, we haven't slowed down so here we are but in that time I've managed to have an amazing set of clients from all over the world which I feel very very lucky and grateful for. I've written two books um, and I've been trained in Zen uh, during that time as well so I've kind of got this really odd mix of academics, business, philosophy, dipping my toe and getting trained in kind of Eastern spiritual systems um, and, and having a crack at authorship as well and I like doing a lot of things. <laughs> so I like talking about a lot of things. I like bringing a lot of things under the one banner and seeing how conflicting worldviews, conflicting views all together, how can they actually complement each other? And that's what I plan to do here is, is, is not to give you anything that, you know, just the new thing, the new thing, the next thing, we're done. If you're like me, you are feeling absolutely done with the what's my next thing, what's my next goal, it's just, there's just more to it. And I plan to bring you the more to it, which is how does this thing all click together? How does the best kernels of truth of human flourishing that we know, I'm gonna, I wanna deliver them to you in a, in a, in a non-jargon, non-academic, non-highfalutin way, so you can actually download it, integrate it, use it, try it, and if you don't like it, you can just scrap it. And if you like it, you can just keep using it. So I'm planning to take the best in the world from what I know and deliver it to you straight down here in easy, accessible videos where you can actually put into practice straight away. And so that's what I'm excited for.